Our senior advisor for foreign policy and national security joining us now. Break down uh, some of this with China now that we're getting more about the meeting that President Biden had. First face-to-face meeting President Biden has had uh, with President Xi. I wanted to play this bite and then get Rick's reaction. It's Joe Biden, bite number six, just from uh, what was this evening in, I think, Bali. But uh, this morning for us here in the United States, bite six. We're going to compete vigorously, but I'm not looking for conflict. I'm looking to manage this competition responsibly. And I want to make sure, make sure that every country abides by the international rules of the road. And we discussed that. So he discussed that, Rick, but we know China is probably the leading country that does not abide by his, quote, rules of the road. Look, this is laughable to think that somehow there's international rules of the road and that everybody is going to abide by them. That is the strategic mistake of the Biden administration and many Democrats, is they believe in this global order. And then we abide by these climate change limitations. And China and India and Nigeria and all sorts of other countries don't. And so we're getting you know, the bad end of these negotiations. And we have our head in the sand if we think that somehow other countries are going to abide. This is the opposite of America first, which is consensus with the world and an assumption that somehow other countries are going to play by the rules. Again, Jordan, you know this, our viewers should know this, but I spent eight years at the UN. I can tell you that unless the United States leads, there is no good policy. We can't just say, global order and everybody abide by the rules what do you think about the fact rick that covid did not come up at all and and, and this this idea that again it's something that killed a million americans millions around the world and president biden when face to face with president g wasn't willing to bring it up look i'm going to say something that's a little bit controversial but i believe it to be true the biden administration and democrats have benefited from covid they've benefited from the political fallout and they leveraged all of the big rules that they needed in order to win elections and to uh, to really manipulate the votes. And what I mean by manipulate the votes, let me be very clear. When you, when you use COVID as an excuse to recklessly send out mail-in ballots and you send them to people because you say, oh, you can't go to the polls because of COVID or we need to send these ballots, but then you have unions go door to door and collect these ballots. That is a recipe for disaster. And we, we should do a whole show on this uh, ballot harvesting issue that, that has now come up. It's, it's illegal in some states, but it is allowed in other states. And, and this is a, a disaster in the making. I don't believe that it's a moral way to do, uh, to do elections. Although it is legal in some places, yeah. I think it's immoral. But when it comes to COVID, we should have absolutely said to the Chinese, uh, you didn't have the protections around that lab. We know through intelligence that that's where COVID started. You literally wreaked havoc on the world and they should, we should find a way to punish them for it. You know, Rick, I want you to take this call because uh, I, I get why Mel's called in from Colorado on line one and I want to let Mel talk. Uh, hey, Mel, welcome to Secular. You're on the air. Well, thanks. Uh, when things are, are pointing to some things that are not really legal, ballots, harvesting and forcing and paying people for their votes and stuff like that, we know that's happening. But th- this is happening to a larger degree than most Americans are really uh, aware of. And we need we need to investigate these things. I don't care what the Democrats say, you know, and it really uh, angers me. Because we don't do anything. And you said, is this going to cause uh, you to be affected in a negative way with the elections? Yeah, you're done right. I'm a strong Republican. I'm a conservative to the core. But if we keep seeing these things happening, then it just kind of weakens me and weakens me. What's the sense? What's the yeah. point? What's the point of voting, I think, is what you're getting at. And, and, and Rick, this is what we, we, we've kind of touched on at ACLJ. And we've touched on it just while we were talking just then. Um, you know, coming up in Georgia, one thing I said is that, you know, like the laws, don't like the laws, understand the early voting laws, and we need to start banking more votes early. And then we can have that discussion about should that be in place at all? What can we do with the states uh, to, again, co- continue to ensure election integrity? 
Uh, and I don't like those super early voting states because I feel like people haven't gotten a full picture of of who they're voting for yet. But when the, when the law is in place and when you know the parameters of how to stay within the law, I think Republicans, at least for the short term, have better start using to uh, every ability possible to the extent of the law. Yeah. Uh, a couple of rapid points. First of all, Mel, thanks for that call. I, I think you've got a, a great point here. And, and you do have to step up and call and get active and not just sit and listen. So thank you for doing that. I think he's right in the fact that, um, you know, we're really frustrated. But let's talk about um, a couple of things. The media are always going to call us a racist, sexist, homophobe, Russian agent, or an election denier. Those are the things. So get comfortable being called names by the media and let it slide off the back. That's the first point. The second point is, is that we have a, a, a terrible problem with ballot harvesting. Um, again, it's, it's legal, as we pointed out. But I believe it's immoral. Um, we have to be able to change those laws or we have to abide by the law and do what they're doing because we have to be very serious about what's going on and be able to put uh, forward our beliefs. I, I believe that uh, churches are going to have to ballot harvest if that is exactly what the law is and it's legal. Uh, we can't be complaining about it. We're going to have to do that. We can work to change the law, but we have to also recognize that we've got to play hard. Um, lastly, I'll just say this. It was very disappointing to see the numbers that many Republicans didn't come out to vote in this midterm. That's just a reality. We lost independence big time, and a lot of Republicans didn't come out to vote. I, I don't know what the answer is. We should do a whole show on listening to callers on why Republicans didn't come out to vote. Did they hear red wave, red wave too much, and they thought my vote doesn't matter? Um, what is the deal? Why did that happen? We should drill down on that, Jordan. But I have to say, you've got to get out and vote. You have to vote early. You can't just vote on election day. I think that's a mistake to say just vote on election day because then the weather or we have some other problems that develop with machines or ink. Uh, you know, we, we had a toner problem in Arizona. So we can't just rely on bombarding election day with our votes. We got to vote earlier. But vote, vote, vote. Do not sit by and allow your country to be taken over by this left by these lefties. Absolutely, Rick. And we saw that here, even locally. We, we I saw massive lines on election day, and like I was one of the people in the lines waiting hours. You usually start those those when you were in hour two, your mind starts creeping into. I live in a pretty red area. Is this really, you know, it, you know I got to get back to my kids. Stuff starts changing, and you do have those things. But also, what we talked about in the last segment is I do think where. Republicans and conservatives maybe laughed at, and some of it rightfully so, some of the social media engagement that uh, the Democrats did with who they invited to the White House and some of the interviews that they were allowing and some of these what felt like silly silly content pieces. Uh, they use the influencer culture well. That's something that they got missed out, and the conservatives don't really do. We don't really embrace some of this new media quickly, and when that happens is you have you know a mass majority of, of the new, new voters, of the Gen Z voters, coming in and voting Democrat because they in some of their platforms where they're getting news and media, there's not even a voice to be heard. That's such a great point. And ACLJ does a really good job of engaging with young people and trying to do, um, you know, uh, young people focused uh, education, books and videos. Uh, I think that that children's books and videos is incredibly important. We have to be able to engage on that social media front. We've done a poor job of doing that. You know, Rick, uh, moving forward uh, now with uh, just Congress, we don't know the balance of power yet. Still looks like the House. You got another question? No, so we got one minute. Actually. Yeah, only one minute left. Uh, just kind of just to give kind of people a little bit of hope and momentum here that, you know, because they need to take that in to Georgia, wherever we live in the country. We I know it's you know, kind of election fog, but that's still going to be an important race. Absolutely. It's an incredibly important race. Um, you should feel good about the fact that we took over the House. Thank God we can stop a lot of these Biden policies. Yes. Did we want to win 52, 53 Senate seats? Of course we did. And we came darn close, but we didn't quite do it. I say that we've just always got to maintain this fight. We've got to be better. Uh, we got to recognize the media is going to be against us. We got a lot of work to do with uh, suburban women. Let's be honest about that. Yep. Young people and and. Come on, rest up for two weeks and get back in the game. Absolutely, Rick. That's what we'll be doing.